Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. In this episode, I wanna walk through uh, the tool that I use to manage and monitor all of our investments. You know, that can become a chore, particularly if you're like me and you have multiple accounts, you have multiple IRAs, 401ks, taxable account, you may have a spouse or significant other, and they may have uh, a number of accounts. And after a while, it becomes a real challenge because you really want to know at a minimum three things. You want to know what you've got invested in, what funds or stocks, bonds, your, your money is in. You want to know the expenses, the expense ratios on each mutual fund uh, or ETF, as well as the overall expenses of a portfolio. And then you want to know your asset allocation, not just how much is in stocks versus bonds, but what type of stocks and what type of bonds. Now, the good news is the tool that I use, I use several, but sort of the foundational tool that I use, personal capital, is totally free and it's actually a phenomenal tool. So I'm going to show you that today. Before we get to it, uh, I read a story this week and it's actually what kind of compelled me to create this video of a young lady. She started out, she opened up an IRA, that's great. Uh, she funded it, she actually transferred money into it, that's good too. And that was about three years ago. That would have been what, maybe the beginning of 2018. She just realized that her money's been sitting in a money market account for those three years. She did not realize that she needed to log into the IRA, the brokerage where she keeps it, and actually invest the money in stock and bond mutual funds. It's been sitting in a money market fund for three whole years. This is a costly mistake. Let me show you something uh, quickly. Um, this is Stock Rover. This is a different tool that I use. I'll leave a link to it as well uh, below the video. But what I'm showing you is the performance of uh, the three fund portfolio. This is a portfolio we've talked about in the past. It's a very simple, but I think powerful portfolio. It includes bond fund. They're using BND, which is the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF. Uh, VTI, which is the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF and VXUS, which is their, uh, an international fund. And you can see the performance. If she had invested in this three fund portfolio, say, at oh, the beginning of 2018, it was tracking in around 120, and now it's at 170. So she missed out on a lot of, of growth from this one simple mistake. I don't want that to happen uh, to you. So uh, again, the tool I use is personal capital. It's very easy to use. Frankly, it's fun to use. And uh, so let's get right to it. Uh, I'll leave a link below the video. If you follow the link, you'll go to a screen like this. You need to e input or your email, create a password, and your phone number. So why your phone number? There's two reasons. One is personal capital uses two-factor authentication. That's where they text you a code that you have to enter uh, in addition, of course, to your email and password. And if you don't have two-factor authentication set up on all of your financial accounts, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a really important security step. Uh, the second reason is, is that Personal Capital is an investment advisor. They provide this financial dashboard that I'm gonna show you for free, but it's a marketing uh, tool for them. They would love to have your business. Now, it's not required. I've been using Personal Capital for years and they don't manage my money. Uh, but they will reach out to you and offer to do a free evaluation of your portfolio. That's, again, not something I've ever uh, accepted and had them do for me. Whether you want to do that, of course, is totally up to you. So once you sign up, um, you're going to go to a screen, actually, that looks a little different than this. You're going to see a questionnaire uh, that can ask you some basic information about you and your investments. You can fill that out if you want. Uh, or if you're like me, I just skip it. I want to get to the good stuff. So this is uh, a brand new account I created just for this video. As you can see, there's nothing in it. And so the first step is to link your accounts. Now in my actual, the personal capital account that I use every day, I have all of our bank accounts linked, uh, all of our credit cards, including business uh, accounts, by the way, and then all of our investment accounts, 401ks, IRAs, taxable accounts. And that way I can get a, a picture of our entire finances all in one place. For this demo, I'm gonna show you sort of the two primary ways to link accounts to personal capital. The first one, click this, um, is to actually connect your account uh, with personal capital using your login information for that account. Uh, they use industry standard uh, security. They never have access to, to your actual login information. 
uh, they can't you know, go in and spend your money. Uh, what it allows them to do is simply download the data to personal capital. Now you can see they have some very popular banks and financial institutions here, but they actually work with thousands of financial institutions. And so the one I'm gonna to connect today is the one where we keep our credit card rewards invested. We've talked about M1 Finance in the past. So there it is. And uh, when you find your institution, uh, financial institution, it's gonna look something like this, where you have to put in your email and your password. Um, and then if you have two-factor authentication enabled, you'll wanna select yes here. And personal capital can work with that. You'll get the text or however you have it set up from your financial institution with the code, you can enter it in. It's all very easy. So give me just a second so that I can enter my credentials uh, for M1 Finance. So once you've entered your credentials, you can see here that they worked. I could from here uh, connect additional accounts, which normally I would do right away. But for this demo, we're just going to uh, stick with M1 Finance. And uh, it'll take a few seconds for it to actually connect. While it's doing that, I want to show you the other way you can enter accounts. You'll notice down here there are some additional buttons, or tabs, I guess buttons. You can, for example, add the value of your home, which we do, and it will update that value based on Zillow's data. But I want to show you this more button here. This allows you to, to enter other types of assets, as you can see, home, car, jewelry. They even have cryptocurrency. You can, if you invest in crypto, uh, you can track that through personal capital as well. The one I want to show you is manual investment holdings. So this you could use, for example, if you have a, a brokerage uh, that personal capital doesn't work with. Frankly, I, I haven't encountered that yet, but I'm, I'm going to guess there's something out there they don't work with. And so it's pretty easy to do. You give it a name. We're going to call it IRA. You can enter your account number if you want, but you don't have to. And uh, once you do that, you can then enter whatever you have in that portfolio, whatever investments. So what I want to do is actually enter the three fund portfolio we were looking at just a minute ago. So um, we'll start with VTI. There it goes. And we have to give it shares. Um, I'm just going to think big. We'll do a thousand. You can, by the way, put your cost basis as well. Uh, now, of course, in a retirement account, that wouldn't matter. But if it's a taxable account, you could. So there's one. So what's that value? 215,000. This is the uh, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index ETF. Uh, the shares we entered here, this is the current price. And then we can add another holding. So we're going to do the bond fund. And there it is, pulls it up. And um, I'm just going to put in 1,000 shares. I'm not sure what the allocation is. OK, value 85,000. And um, we'll add one more. And this is VXUS. This is the international. Again, we're just going to throw in 1,000 shares. And so there's our, our manually entered portfolio. Now, I'm going to go back over to the dashboard. And when we come over here, we can see this is the manual investment holdings that we just entered. And here are the M1 Finance accounts. Um, I actually have two, but as you can see, one of them doesn't have any money. So I'm going to click the pencil icon and remove it. We don't plan to add any money to it. So there we go. We've got our M1 Finance account. This is where we invest our credit card rewards that I've linked using the M1 Finance login credentials. Now, the advantage with that is that personal capital can update your accounts every single day. So if you invest more in that account, uh, it'll automatically get reflected in, in, per, in personal capital. Same is true with dividends and interest that get reinvested. If you do a manual investment holding like I did, you're going to actually have to physically, you know, sort of go in and update it manually, which is why I don't use that approach for my actual account. But it's an option and I wanted to show it to you. So once you connect all of your accounts, how does this help us? Well, remember the three things we want to do. We want to know what we've invested in. We want to know what our fees are, right? And we want to know what our asset allocation is. So let's go through those. If we go to the Investment tab, we can go to Holdings. This shows me all of my holdings. Um, you can see Wells Fargo and Bank of America. Those are the two stocks I own in M1 Finance. And here are the three uh, ETFs 
uh, that I've added manually. So I can just in a click of a button, I can see all of my investments, the shares in each investment, the price, uh, in this case, the one day change. It looks like uh, the bank stocks are up today. So that's, that's good news. And the other nice thing is I can also narrow this down by account. Now, in this case, uh, we only have two accounts, but you notice it says taxable here. If I were to connect a 401k or an IRA, I would get a second heading down here for, for uh, non-taxable or retirement. And I could click and check all the taxable, all the retirement. I could uh, uncheck and just look at one. You, you can really sort of slice and dice it, as I say, like to say, however you want to. The other thing you can do is you can look at longer time periods uh, if you want. And up here, it just shows you the performance relative uh, to, in this case, the S&P uh, 500. They calculate what they call the U index, which is effectively the, your performance of your portfolio. So that's a great way to see what you're invested in. Now, let's talk about um, uh, fees. They have, so we looked at investments, holdings. Now we want to go over to planning and we want to look at retirement fee analyzer. Now, you'll notice here that um, it was wanting me to link an account. And the reason it's doing that, oops, the reason it's doing that is because the accounts that I've linked are not retirement accounts. Now, however, I can go in here and edit this one and I'm going to actually make it a retirement account. And then we're going to make it an IRA. Um, we don't need to really provide the owner. You can then select whether it's a traditional Roth or rollover and so on. We'll make this a traditional and we'll save it. And then automatically um, the retirement fee analyzer comes to life. Now, um, having said all of that, you can actually look at taxable accounts too with this retirement fee analyzer. And you can see just like in the other screen, you can select which accounts you want to run through the retirement fee analyzer. In this case, why not look at all of them? Although in the M1 finance account, since it's individual stocks, we know that um, there are no uh, expense ratios. So the great thing is it tells us your annual fees and this is for your portfolio as a whole. Of course, you could, as I said, drill down to individual investments as well. And you can see that our annual fees are just four basis points. So that's really, really good. Of course, that makes sense since we're using Vanguard ETFs, which as you probably know, are really inexpensive. And here we can see them on a fund by fund basis. And of course, the um, individual stocks uh, don't have any expense ratios. And the nice thing is, is that based on certain assumptions, they will show you the cost of fees over time. Now, I have not put into this account what my age is. It thinks I'm 30. Boy, <laughs> it would be nice to be 30 again, I think. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't be. In any event, I'm not 30. So I could, of course, change all of that, but for our purposes, I'll leave it alone. Uh, but you can see that even with relatively low expense ratios, when you're talking about a lot of money over time, uh, it can still uh, add up. So that's the great thing about the retirement fee analyzer is that it doesn't just show you your expense ratios of individual funds or even your expense ratios of your portfolio as a whole, but it shows you the impact of those fees uh, over time. And that's extremely useful. So that's the second thing. Now, remember, the third thing is asset allocation. So uh, we can go to back to investing. We're going to come down to allocation. And this is, in some ways, my favorite screen because of the, the, the unique way it's set up. So you're looking at the asset allocation uh, screen. Uh, we can see it sort of in table form down here. But then they have it in a, a graphical form here. And as you notice, as my, my cursor sort of rolls over uh, the different asset classes, they get broken down further. Like in US stocks, you can see all these different boxes that show up. Well, if we click this, it, it expands just the US stocks and it shows you by uh, sub asset class. So we've got large cap value, large cap core, large cap growth, all the way down to mid and small. And as we hover over each of these, it breaks it down further. So large cap value actually shows me the investments in my portfolio that personal capital recognizes as falling into the large cap value um, uh, asset class. Now, 
If, if you're not familiar with what all that means, I did an entire series on Morningstar, which focuses on that tool, but also walks through a lot of these term, terms and terminology. I'll leave a link to that below this video. But you can see I've got the VTI as one of them. And then of course, banks generally are viewed as value stocks uh, by and large, and that's certainly true today. And then if I wanna go back out, I can go back here, click the, they call these breadcrumbs up here, go back to US stocks and I could, oh, I don't know, dive into mid cap core, VTI, and just a little bit of VXUS. And then I can zoom all the way back out and I don't know, jump into bonds, for example. The other nice thing that you can do, and it's not all that relevant here, but I can go to cash. Now you look at this, I'll show you on the table. You might say, Rob, I don't understand. You linked M1 Finance, which has got just stocks in it, and you created this three fund portfolio, which has got bond and stock funds. Why in the world is there, where did the cash come from? Well, uh, mutual funds and ETFs often own or hold cash. Now, depending on the fund, sometimes they hold a lot of cash. And that can be important to know. You don't want to put your money in an expensive, actively managed fund. Well, generally, you don't want to do that under any circumstance, but you certainly don't want to do that if they're taking your money and holding a lot of it in cash and charging you 1% for it. Now, in this case, the cash, given the value of the portfolio, 390000 $312 in cash, isn't all that much, but I can click that and notice I can click in the table or the chart. Let me go back and show you that again. I could have clicked over here or you can click on the table itself and it breaks down where the cash is. So VXUS actually holds 188 bucks, VTI 64 and bond 59. So um, again, a very easy tool to use and incredibly powerful. And I've really only scratched the surface when you, when you connect your bank accounts and your credit cards, you can track all of your cash flow. Um, you can track all of your, your, your spending, you can budget. Uh, so it really is an all around uh, tool. I've used it for a number of years, as I mentioned, and frankly, I log in just about every single day to, to manage our finances. Now, for tool time, I wanna show you a couple of other uh, uh, things that you can do with personal capital. And I wanna start with one that I don't think a lot of people know about. So let's go back to the screen. I can come up here to, to settings and profile. If we go to settings, we're gonna see this email subscriptions. Now they're all checked at the moment. Um, uh, you can decide what you want, but these are emails that personal capital will send you. Um, the daily email or the weekly email are both great. Um, depends how often you wanna receive it, but what these will do is send you an email showing you all the transactions in your account this is particularly useful if you link your, your bank accounts and your credit cards, it will show you your spending. And you can just you know, uh, peruse the email, it takes literally like 20 seconds, and just spot any un, unknown charges to your credit card or withdrawals from your bank accounts. And that way you can catch things very, very, very quickly. Obviously there are other emails that you can sign up for if you want to, but I've used the daily email for a very long time. If you prefer to get it in a weekly format, you could do the weekly email as well. So that's the first sort of tool time trick that I wanted to show you that kind of gets hidden away within the personal capital tool uh, that I think is uh, extremely uh, helpful. The second one is probably maybe better well known and that's the retirement planner. And so uh, to do this, you would have to put in your information. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make something up. I'm gonna say I was born in, I don't know, 19, 1980. And I'm gonna retire at 65, um, single, uh, single, and I live in Alaska. I've been to Alaska actually, beautiful state. Okay, so you can then put in your current savings. Let's just say I'm, I'm putting, I'll just think big, 15,000. Uh, oh, that's my current savings. No, 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 no. We can use the dashboard data here. So it'll pull in what's here. That's convenient. Yearly savings, that's where I wanted to put the 15,000. How much you earn each year? Uh, we'll say I earn 75 grand. And monthly retirement spending. So how much do you want to spend in retirement? I'm just going to make up a number. 10 grand a month. You can see things changing for better or worse over here. If I add another zero, it probably has a heart attack. Oh, it won't even, won't even let me. You can't even spend 100 grand a month. All right, fine. I wonder if we can spend 50. No, let's see. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't like that. It, it, okay. All right, let's get back to reality. I'm not sure 10,000 is reality, but that's what we're going to use. 
Uh, we're not going to add any children. And it loads up and provides you with a, a high level view of retirement. I'm going to exit out of this high level view of retirement. From here, you can do all kinds of things like, goodness, estimate your Social Security. So I'm going to do that. I, you can just let personal capital estimate it for you, which is what I've done. Or you can put it in yourself. And then spending goals. So this is the monthly spending goal, but I could add another spending goal. I could say, um, I want to go around the world, right? I'm going to do a big trip and uh, it's going to be just once and I'm going to spend $25,000. I don't know what a trip around the world costs. And I'm going to do that when I retire. Save that. And it recalculates uh, all of your retirement planning numbers. Uh, the other thing it does is you can create scenarios. So I could create a new scenario where I say, okay, I'm not going to travel around the world, but I'm going to start a new hobby and it's going to cost me $2,000 a year or, or whatever. And you can compare uh, those uh, scenarios. So a really fun tool to use. It's easy to use. You can edit assumptions here, which include your tax rate, uh, inflation assumptions, and your life expectancy. Um, so uh, it's, it's a, a, a great tool that integrates well with personal capital. So there you go. That is, I think, the best tool uh, to monitor and manage your investments. It's not the only tool I use. I do use other, other tools as well uh, that I'll show you in future videos. But for me, it, it's a great tool. It's free and very easy to use and answers the fundamental questions we should all be asking about our investments. As I said, I'll leave links below this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.